So today we're going to learn how to insert an IV. First, you have a flush, and I always bring an extra one. Alcohol pads, caps, in order for you not to have any open ports. An IV extension, the needles, different sizes. Here is a 24 gauge, a 22 gauge, and a 20 gauge depending on what your patient's going to have infused, as well as an IV start kit, and of course your gloves after you wash your hands. So the first thing that you wanna see is where does the patient have a good vein in order for us to put a good IV site that's going to last. Usually I do not go to the antecubital if the patient's going to be admitted because a lot of times when they are bending their arm, that IV site bends because it is a plastic catheter. So you're gonna hear a lot of beep, 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 beep in the pump. So I kind of look at the forearm and the last place I look at is on their hand. Um, a lot of patients complain that it is very painful on their hand. So I try to avoid it unless I can't find anything else. So usually in the forearm, depending on the hydration of the patient, you'll find a good vein to use. For example, I could easily see that she has a good vein right here. She also has a good vein in her wrist, as well as in her hand. However, another part that you have to take into consideration, just like I said with the antecubital, is that the wrist bends. And this vein right here is right on the wrist bone. So this can also be painful and also is a bendable joint. When choosing an IV site, you also want to avoid areas that have knots or grooves or veins that have a connecting point, like in this picture, that there are two veins and you see that one spot where they connect because sometimes it can be a little hard to slide the IV into that vein. IV catheters come in sizes. The bigger the gauge, the smaller the needle. The smaller the gauge, the bigger the needle. That is very important to remember, especially when you're trying to determine which is the best gauge for your patient. For example, if your patient is going to get a blood transfusion, it is preferred that they have between an 18 to a 22 gauge. Remember to always follow your institution's policies regarding which gauge it is preferred for a blood transfusion, IV fluids, IV antibiotics, or whatever it is that you are going to be administering the patient via this IV site. The tourniquet is placed about two to four inches above the site that you have chosen for the IV site. One of the things that I do in order to help the vein plump up is that I tap it. You can also have the patient make a fist and that can help as well. So what is included in this IV start kit? The first thing you'll see is the dressing or the tegaderm, which is gonna be placed over the IV site to secure the site. You're going to see the alcohol swab or scrub the medical tape, as well as the tourniquet. And you're going to see the patient label where you would put the date, time, gauge, and your initials, as well as two by two gauzes. So now I'm going to take my alcohol scrub and clean the skin where my IV site will be placed from the inside out in circular motion. It is very important that you do not blow on the skin or fan the skin in order for it to dry faster. You need to let the alcohol dry naturally because you do not want to introduce any types of germs, bacteria that may be floating in the air. Once you have chosen the gauge of needle that you want to use, you need to make sure that when you're inserting the needle, the bevel is up and this is what the bevel looks like. Now you may ask, why is it that the bevel has to be up and not down? Well, when the bevel is up, it allows the sharp tip to pierce the skin first, paving the way for the rest of the needle. If the bevel is down, it will cause painful tearing of the skin. Once you have chosen the correct size of catheter that you will use, you wanna stabilize the limb and you are going to insert this IV at about a 30 degree angle. The flashback of blood in the catheter's applicator will indicate that the vein has been hit. Advance the needle one more centimeter into the vein. You see the needle, that little silvery thing? Usually I would press the safety mechanism right after, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So I hit that white little button and it retracted the needle inside. So that's protecting me from getting stuck by that needle. 
Remove the tourniquet that I had applied prior to insertion. Now I would check the patency of this IV site by placing a 2x2 gauze that is included in the IV start kit underneath and I'm going to press down to prevent any blood from flowing out. Then I will attach the flush of 10 cc normal saline to the IV extension and I'm going to pull back some which will show blood in the tubing which tells me that it is in the vein. Then I'm going to flush the IV site with about 8 cc of the 0.9 normal saline flush. I usually only do 8 because I do not want any type of bubbles in the tubing. So that way I have plenty enough to clean the IV tubing and also enough that it will not cause any type of bubbles in the tubing itself. After the IV site has been flushed, I will place a tegaderm or a dressing over the IV site in order to secure it in place as well as use a couple of pieces of tape. Once the tegaderm is placed, I put a piece of tape and I crisscross it over the IV catheter to one side and to the other side. I then proceed to clamp the tubing, remove the flush, and place a cap to the end of that tubing in order to prevent any type of microbes or bacteria from entering. At this point, I put an additional piece of tape to the IV catheter to secure it in place to the extremity. Then I proceed to date, time, and initial as well as place the number gauge of IV that I use on this patient. Once the IV site has been labeled with the date, time, gauge that you used for this IV site, as well as your initials, you are going to document this and you're also going to include the location of the IV site. For example, this is the right wrist and this is all going to go into the patient's medical record. And here is the completed IV site. I hope that this video was helpful in understanding how to insert an IV site and make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, Dr. Register Nurse and share with your friends, as well as follow us on Instagram under official Dr. Register Nurse where I put a lot of additional nursing material. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.